Now we'd like to introduce our second keynote speaker. Uh, that is Jim Highsmith. Jim is an Agile pioneer and one of the co-authors of the Agile Manifesto. Very fortunate to have him with us today. Jim advises whole industries on reimagining Agile and business agility. And Jim's talk, as you can see from the screen, is Reimagining Agile for the Intelligent Revolution. Over to you, Jim. Thanks a lot. And thanks, Peter, for inviting me to this. I've enjoyed it so far, and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Um, you've called this a summit, and so I put up my summit picture right here. This is Alistair Coburn and myself at the top of the Snowbird ski lift during the manifesto writing period. Where does AI stand today? I did these with Dali, but you can think of a, a cave couple many years ago. What would I have done looking at an iPhone? What do we do with this? How do we use it? Is it going to be us any good? Is it going to destroy us? AI not only shapes our technology, but our daily routines in unimaginable ways. As Peter said, it's going to have impact. I've accumulated a set of numbers over the last few months, but they show the staggering nature of what we're up against. NVIDIA just released their Blackwell chip, which has 208 billion transistors on. My introduction to transistors was in electrical engineering in undergraduate school in the early 60s. If you took the transistors that we used back then and took 208 billion of them, it would cover 10 square miles. So you'd have 10 square miles per chip, which would mean you couldn't put very many chips together. NVIDIA went from 11 to $61 billion over the last five years, a 64% compound growth rate. They are now the most valuable company in the world. From a management perspective, the CEO of NVIDIA has 50 direct reports. Think about what that changes in the way you manage an organization if you have 50 direct reports when the typical span of control, as they call it, is five to seven. $300,000 to four cents per gigabyte. Storage from 1970 to 2024. Microsoft and OpenAI are putting together a $100 billion supercomputer data center called Stargate. A $100 billion supercomputer center. It cost about $100 million to train GPT-4, and that's just compute cost. 100 plus trillion parameters in chat GPT-4. These are the kinds of numbers we're trying to deal with today, and they're substantial. Mustafa Suleiman, the co-founder of DeepMind and the current CEO of Microsoft AI. As we stand at this turning point, we are faced with a choice a choice between a future of unparalleled possibility and a future of un unimaginable peril. And so we're on this dividing line. Amy Webb, futurist, talked at South by Southwest this spring. We are in a super cycle, which gives us Gen T. I like this, the transition generation. Everybody alive today, every one of you, is part of a great transition. Our society is going to look very, very different after this transition cycle. If half of the hype turns out true about AI, we're still in a major transition. So Pete Behrens and myself, uh, a couple of months ago, we started working on looking at major transitions that had occurred in the past. Uh, we looked at mean manufacturing from Toyota. And one of the things Toyota implemented in a very unique way and got a lot of benefit, they offered their approach to other people. And other people, they pick up some of the practices maybe, but they didn't pick up the cultural changes. Same thing with agile software development. Over the last 20 years, there's been some great improvements in software development because of agile. There also disappointments, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. The idea of data-driven decisions, uh, like Amazon has a huge database of its customers and, and products. How do we apply those in the kinds of transitions we've done before to the AI? Corey Block wrote an article in Forbes a couple of years ago that said 84% of all trans digital transformation failed. She got this by looking at numbers from McKinsey, BCG, KPMG, and Bain, who all said 70 to 90% of all digital transformations failed. Maybe that's a good reason for not hiring McKinsey, BCG, KPMG, and Bain. 
we faced major transition, but we've failed in a lot of situations. And if we don't understand why we failed, we're going to repeat ourselves again. The AI literature has talked a lot about jobs. In the 1940s, telephones used switchboard operators. You didn't call directly to your intended recipient. You called the switchboard operator, and they plugged you in to the person that you were trying to get in touch with. From the late 30s to the early 40s, 400,000 jobs were lost as telephone switchboard operators. Here was a techn technological change that created jobs for designers, for manufacturing, for installation, for training, but not jobs switchboard operators could move into. We're in this super cycle of change, AI, biotech, and interactions with people and computers through VR, AR. So it's going to cause a huge amount of turbulence in the marketplace. So let's talk about specifics and let's talk about the Agile movement. The promise and hope of Agile. One of the things, uh, part of the Agile Manifesto and Ward Cunningham set up, and it was a brilliant move, is anybody could sign on and sign up and say a little bit or a lot about what they thought about the manifesto. Over the next 10 or 15 years, 15 plus thousand people signed the manifesto and had comments about it. These are just three that I picked out from the early years. Agile development makes so much sense in practice as to make any other approach almost laughable. Every developer should put this manifesto over his or her desk as a reminder. I hope that this is the only beginning of a long journey, of a great journey. I'm with it all the way. And in those comments, you see the hope and promise from a very personal level of what Agile was supposed to be. So Agile has had stunning success and sharp disappointment. And, and these two pictures could, could see me in that during the early years, 2000 to 2010, I was involved in project after project all over the world, most of when were stunning successes. A lot of companies that did a really good job. And as I got back into the ebb and flow of any Agile movement over the last year or so, I was disappointed in hearing that Agile was dead, that it wasn't going to be around anymore, that there was nothing left. And I was disappointed at that. So what was the root cause of some of these disappointments? And I had a number of those, but I'll just talk about one of them, which I think is a big one. I think we've lost the soul of Agile, but we're trying to get it back. There is a great book called The Soul of a New Machine. It was written in 1981 by Tracy Kidder. It won a Pulitzer Prize. And it is a great read. It talked about the soul of the people they put into this machine. It was about the design of a uh, super mini computer back in 1980. But it was about the team and how they worked. A team of fairly young engineers uh, led by a charismatic leader uh, and the intersection between human ambition and technological innovation. They were trying to get the soul back. If you look at the stuff that Alistair Coburn, who's a good friend of mine, who's been working on this for several years, he talks about the heart of Agile. And then recently, Josh Kariewski, another good friend of mine, has written a book called The Joy of Agility to get back to the soul or the heart of Agile. And I think that's what's been missing. We'll call it culture, mindset. I'll call it soul. One of the other issue or disappointment with the um, Agile Movement. In 1977, I sat in a theater and watched the first Star Wars movie, and it was an incredible experience. It's a tremendous emotional moment. Um, that was the content of the movie. In the theater, we've since gone to VCRs, to DVD videos, and Netflix. Netflix, DVDs, theater, VCRs are all containers. The movie itself, the core content, and I liken containers to the methodologies and frameworks. The container of the, the soul mindset and the individual practices. And you can have a minimalist approach like XP, a maximalist approach like SAFE, but it's the underlying goal of it that really makes a difference in your implementation. 
Some people take the Agile Manifesto very literally, and I take it not very literally. I say, what is the intention? And to that, we came up with a declaration for independence for project management. The values that we body for project management drew from the Agile Manifesto, but was a different wording. And I think Peter's done the same thing with Manifesto for, with AI. Now, we'll have a hybrid team. Your teams from now on will have both agents and people. And you've got to re restructure teams based on this. I've written a couple of articles in LinkedIn recently. One, if you failed at Agile, you will fail at AI. If you failed at the transition, at the transformation into an Agile environment, if you're not going to work in your AI transition. You, you have some time, but you don't have a choice. It's going to happen to you no matter what. So you don't have a choice about AI, but you do have a little bit of time. And so I'll ask you as a final slide, which transformation team do you want to be on? The one with the heart and all, or the one that doesn't have the right mindset? And with that, we'll turn this off and ask questions for a few minutes or answer questions. For a few. We're actually out of question time, uh, but okay. people still have questions. If you could hold them, we will have another session with each of the different speakers later. So you will get your chance. Uh, it's now time for John's talk. John is the CEO of C4G Enterprises in Virginia. He, it's an organizational design and business management consultancy. Consultancy, rather. John's keynote is entitled AI and Business Misalignment at the Coalface.